Lord. Come on and give us a song. Sing down the rain. Sing down the rain. She's supposed to have surgery on her back, and she was going to be out for a year. And it's a miracle of God. She was only out for about a month. She went back to work. And when we were coming back to the hospital, we saw her. We hugged her. We were about to shout, hallelujah, because <laughs> we've been praying for you. Every man needs her. Wow. Yeah. 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 I just want to say that. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And we're 
power of the key, you find the concerning the list and the power of prayer. Amen. And you have to believe that God is going to hear your prayer. Amen. Look at somebody tell the name of God hears me when I pray. Hey, it's not about arrogance, it's about my relationship with the Lord. Amen, amen. We thank God for that testimony. Amen. Men are always to pray and not faint. So God bless you, my brother, for that testimony. I'm gonna stay on that. Believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Come on, Sister Thomas.
God, we can get ready to be a blessing unto the Lord. Amen. Whatever you have, we want you to give as unto the Lord. Amen. We understand everybody's situation, circumstances, not all life, but we know, amen, everybody serves the same God. God understands. Amen. If you uh, need an envelope, please let the usher know. Just hang on by lifting your hands. She'll see that you receive one. Amen. It is well in my soul. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God says, I ain't working. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We got a movie. We thank God for it. Come on, let's put those hands together for our usher. Come on. Don't we love Sister Hayes? Amen. 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 And you know we love everybody around him. Not here, but him. Amen. I tell you something. I think I said it before a long time ago. You come around here acting like you don't want to love. We're going to teach you how to love. Come on. Do I got any witnesses on today? Amen. Amen. We're going to love the devil out of you. Amen. Amen. We're going to love you today because we want you to stay alive. We're just going to love the devil out of you. Amen. Because that's who will beat you. We're trying to hold you from love. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs to be loved. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Everybody been assisted on this morning? Amen. Amen. Come on and step to your feet. We're going to get ready. Put those hands. Look, put those hands together. Amen. Put it to the hands of our faithful. Everyone smiling Everyone bring the offering to the Lord. Everyone. Come on, read down with a smile. God love the children. Don't come down here like you're mad about it. Amen. Everybody smile. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. I hope you're smiling on the inside. Hallelujah.
to teach us how to be better people for God. Amen. I do honor my Heavenly Father and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I do honor the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Which is my keeper. Amen. I do honor. Amen. Apostle Herman Murray, first lady of the Amen. I do honor all the ministers here, Minister Banks, Minister Antoine, Evangelist Antoine, each and every one of you that's here, that's present. Amen. You didn't have to be here, but you know, I thank God that you are. Amen. Amen. I want you to know I love each and every one of you. Amen. And I thank God for you. Amen. I appreciate God for another great opportunity. Amen. That was not promised to me. You know, I I, I, I take everything seriously, you know, because God did not have to call me to preach the gospel, but he did. He chose me. I didn't choose him. Amen. And I thank God that, you know, he, he looked down on my life and and he, wanted, he looked at me and said, I want to use him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I thank God for that. It's, yeah. it's a privilege and an honor. Amen. 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 And knowing that it wasn't nothing that I did. Come on. Because my righteousness is still oh, right. Come on now. Amen. Amen. But it's because it pleased him yeah. to choose me. Amen. Amen. And I thank God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thank God for his love. It's something that... Yeah. Uh, Minister Banks alluded to in Sunday school lesson. You can't make God love you no more than what He loves. That's right. That's right. The Bible says He so loved the world that He gave. That's right. Even after Adam sinned and messed up and transgressed, That's right. you know, God saw fit to make a way for humanity yeah. to get back into that place that God put us in. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Amen. This is sweet nectar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 They got that frost on it too. So you know what's going on. <laughs> Amen. Lord, Lord, we bless me. I, ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't drink like the food like I used to. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it sure will be calling me though. Amen. But I thank God for His grace and His tender most mercy because He loved us so. Amen. He loved us so much that He sent His Son because He couldn't send nothing greater than His Son. You see, and I appreciate God for. His love. He, he loved me just like you know he loved he loved you. Yeah. Like I said, I take it personally. Yeah. Amen. I'm not, I'm sitting here and I'm gonna keep on thinking that I'm the only one he loved. Yeah. Amen. But I know he did because he said it in his word. He said he, he loved us so much that you know he sent his only begotten son. Yeah. He saved us yeah. from our sins. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you know, I, I found out that. You know, if you don't talk about sin, if you don't preach against sin, mm -hmm. then the people will sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we saw that with the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Moses went in that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And when, and when Joshua was halfway up the mountain, mm -hmm. when he met Joshua, he, you know, they, they, Joshua thinking they celebrate. Now Moses said that's reverence. They done sin against God. They done build a golden calf and everything. Mm. This is the God that led us out of Egypt. Ah, Isn't that something? That's a thing. Has no life. And yet you say this is the God. You see how low we can go? Yeah. You know, God, he has blessed us among all creatures on the face of the earth. But our nature can go lower than that. Oh, Isn't that something? That so true. Amen. We do things that animals don't do. Wow. Mm. That's so true. That's true. <coughs> you know, but we worship things. You know that 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 uh, that's not lawful unto God. You know, there's nothing on the face of this earth that man does not worship. Mm. Wow. Worship all types of animals. Mm. That's so true. Worship the universe. Yes. Now they're saying it's the universe. The universe. That's right. Yep. God created the universe. Amen. And if it's a creation of God, how can it be greater than the greater God? It's just like this, this church, a beautiful church, but it's no greater than the hands that built it. You see, sometimes we get, as people, we get things out of perspective. We got to keep our eyes focused on God. Because it's hard enough to get to heaven itself. 
because the Bible says so. So we have to be holy. God is looking for one thing. It's holiness. God loved us so much. Let me tell you how much God loved us. God loved us so much that he gave us his character. Mm -hmm. Which is holiness. Make it plain. He said, be ye holy. For I am holy. Mm -hmm. And he said, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what God wants for his people is to be holy. You see, what is holiness? Mm. This is the things that we have to find out when we become born again believers. We have so much to do that we should get caught up in things, affairs of this life, because we have so much to do before we get there. Right, right. Therefore, we have to prepare ourselves right now to meet God. Yes. God going to have to look at us, and what God is looking for. It's simply his son. Amen. If we don't have the son, the Bible says we have none of his. You see. So we, we are supposed to be people of God. And if we're going to be people of God, then we have to be holy people of God. And if we're going to be holy, we must be separated from this world. We look at the church collectively as a whole. The church is in a sad condition. You see, because we have now taken the world and bring it into the church and we're trying to entertain the people. People love to be entertained. God is not an entertaining God. Right, right. This is what we have to understand. God is serious. God is real. And he sent his son to die for the world. And if you reject Christ, don't you know you're in trouble? I want to talk to you this morning about a command to be holy. God does not ask us to be holy. He commands us to be holy. He said, be holy. And then he, don't, he, then he gives you the warning. He gives you the, 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 the uh, he said, holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. You can't stand in God's presence without being holy. Amen. He gives you the consequences, the repercussions of not being holy. That's right, that's right. No man shall see the Lord. In other words, if you go to hell, it's total separation from God. You'll never hear from him. You'll never see him. Mm. Throughout all eternity. How long is eternity? Mm. Eternity don't have no time. Mm. Eternity has no ending. Can you imagine being in hell for 10,000 years? Uh -huh. And then you're going to experience something worse than that. The Bible said that hell and death is going to get cast into the lake of fire. Uh -huh. And if hell enlarges itself every day, uh -huh. then how great is the lake of fire? Uh -huh. Wow. Uh -huh. So there's something worse than hell. Just like there's something greater than a new birth. And that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what God wants to have. Holiness demands change. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is beyond a shadow of doubt a new creature. He's been changed. See, when you sincere about this, I know for a fact that in 1995, I was changed. Yeah. Into a new creature. Yeah. Old things passed away. What I used to do, how I used to talk, how I used to dress, how I used to conduct myself. Yeah. All that changed. Yeah. That's what happens when you get born again. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Oh, I've been saved. Say this. You know, if you ask a hundred people that you say, mm. they're going to say, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But then ask them, have they been born again? Yeah. Okay, then they, they're going to start speaking in another tongue. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's the difference saying, have you been saved? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been saved. I've been saved since 1969. <laughs> have you been born again? Huh? Fuck you, what? 
So that's a different thing. Yeah. Now Christ came into your life. Yeah. Yeah. And he come into your life in such a way that you're not the same person no more. Yeah. See, a lot of people say, listen, God look at the heart. And he does. But what's in the heart is a manifestation of what's on the outside. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on, come on. Because if you if you've been born again in your heart, this is gonna show I'm on the outside of you. Yeah. That's right. You see, because you there's gonna be a change about you. There's gonna be a, a glow about you. There's gonna be something different than that world. Right, right. What they're gonna see now is a light. You see. It's that same covering that God covers himself. He covers himself in light. That's the covenant that Adam and Eve had. That's why they was naked. They didn't know it. That's right. But when they lost that covenant, mm -hmm. what was the first thing they noticed? Mm -hmm. That they was naked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they was ashamed. Mm -hmm. So they saw fig leaves to cover themselves. Mm -hmm. That's why nakedness is shameful. But in the church today, in the world today, it's just another thing. Mm -hmm. It's the fashion now. Mm -hmm. The less, the best. <laughs> right. And I, 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 I'm inclined to say that some people don't need to do that. I know. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Like me. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of built like an ice cream cone. Me ain't gonna be a small that night. <laughs> I ain't got no business wearing no shorts. My legs ain't right. I ain't got no fit to put them on tank top. Because it probably wouldn't fit too good. But people don't care now. The less they wear, it seems like the better they feel. Yeah. And it has entered into the church. That's true too. You see, we're supposed to dress. Jesus said make a difference between clean and not clean. Oh, yeah, not We're supposed to be clean. We're supposed to be holy. We're supposed to be saved and sanctified. And our outer appearance must represent that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're supposed to be different from that world. Because sometimes we're, we're the only hope that people have in that world to see Jesus. So God commands us to be holy. That's a command from God that we be holy as he is holy. Yeah. He's a holy God. Amen. And he cannot bear the appearance of sin. Mm -hmm. And we should hate sin like he hates sin. Right, right. And we should love like he loves. Yes. Now, we're going to deal with this this morning, command to be holy. And I ask that you would turn your Bibles to <coughs> Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And we'll begin at the 17th verse. Ephesians 4 and 17. Ephesians 4 and 17. Let us read. If you have it, say amen. Amen. All right. In Ephesians 4 and 17, it says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord. He's letting us know that what he's saying does not come from him. Right, right. He's saying it's coming from Jesus. He said, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles, mm -hmm. walk in the vanity of their minds. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the Ephesian church. That's true. That's true. He's addressing this right. simply because there may be some people that's not walking according to the will of God. Right, right, right. They're not walking in holiness. You see, so Paul said. Listen, don't walk as other Gentiles walk. You know, the Gentiles is us. And Paul was called to preach to the Gentiles. That's right, that's right. 
Because God loved everybody. He loved the Gentiles just like he loved the Jews. That's right. That's right. So he wants the Gentiles to be holy too. But he's saying, listen, church, don't walk like they walk in the vanity of their minds. That word vanity means emptiness. Right, right. You see, they have no concern, no thought, no consideration about God. How do you walk? Because the Bible said, as a man thinketh, so is he. How are you walking today? It's, it's, it's one thing to come to church and act holy. But you got six days after that. How are you walking then? It's always easy to come in here and perpetrate. Put on the front. You can dress holy, look holy. You can have the appearance of godliness. But how are you living after that? How are you? See, that's integrity. You see, integrity is, is you the same way when there ain't nobody there. That's true. That's true. If you hold it down at church, you can be holy at the job. That's right. That's right. You don't go to work and change your clothes. You dress, you dress holy now at church, but when you get off, when you go to work, you dress in something totally different. You try to hang with the boys or with the girls while you're at work. Clown, like they clown. <laughs> You see, you're not a child of God. Because if God has come into your life and you've been born again, holiness demands shame. So you will be the same way at church, at work as you have at church. Amen. You ain't got to put on a front. This is who I am. Because God has changed me. When I'm on vacation, I ain't got a set of vacation clothes. <laughs> That I wear only on vacation, but I don't want the saints to see me. Don't you know you can be on the other side of the world running to one of the churches? <laughs> <laughs> you sitting there in that bikini and uh, and, and, no. and hugs sitting in them, them swimming trunks, y'all laying on the beach, trying to get a tan, and one of the saints walk right up on you. Wouldn't that be something? You're going to try to grab everything to cover yourself up. Or try, like she said, try to bury yourself in the sand. <laughs> do like the Oshawa do. Stick his head in the sand, but the rest of it is still exposed. <laughs> but we have to be a child of God everywhere we go because if God changed us, See, that's when, 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 it, when you say, I want to get saved, it has to come from a broken and contrite spirit. You have to desire this because God has drawn you to this. Nobody comes to God except God draws you. You can't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I want to be saved. No, God has had to be dealing with your heart. You see. And then there has to be a desire to be changed. And when you have that desire, that's when God can come in and change your life because he's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can make a bad man good. That's right. You can take the baddest man on the face of this earth if you want to call it. But he's no match for God. God can break that heart. That's right. And humble. I have seen some of the toughest, what you call tough Fellas walking around here, God changed their life. They one of the most humblest guys. Right. Yep, you're right. Because of what they experienced, what they've been through, God changed them. Yes. It's a miracle when you get born again. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's nothing short of a miracle because that's what's going to take. Because nothing can change us but God. You can lay on that couch and let that man talk to you. Why is this bother? Can you tell me why you did that? Man, man, let's switch. Because God is the only one that can change you. Let, let us keep reading. It says, who being past feelings have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. To work all uncleanness without, with greediness. Listen, sin, listen. Sin will make you greedy. You're going to always want more. You're going to always do more. 
That is so true. Because you never satisfied. Never satisfied. That's right. But in Christ, Paul says, listen, I have learned to be content. Yes. That flesh is never satisfied. Never. It's always greedy, always wants more. But in Christ, there's contentment. In any condition that you're in, Paul says, I had to learn to be content. Right. Right. He had to learn this. You see? And Paul, one of the greatest men of God that ever walked the face of the earth, I think he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And he said, I had to learn. Right. That's right. Come on. To be satisfied. Come because on. there was times that he was not. Come on. But he said, I had to learn this, that in any, in any state that I'm in, whether it be I have much or little, Right. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Because in Jesus, you have everything anyway. That's true. And if we walk this life, if we be holy, like God is holy, and we stand before him, then we don't have everything that we need. And then some. Because God, Jesus said, listen, in my house, he said, there's many mansions. He said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. Yeah. He said, listen, if I want to have to, if I told you so, if I tell you this, then it's going to happen. You see. But there's conditions. We got to be holy. We got to be holy men and women of God. We are here for one reason, to demonstrate Christ to this dying world. That's why we're here. That's why God saved us. If you ever want to realize why you're here, why God saved you, it's to demonstrate Christ to this world. Right? Yeah. We got to live yeah. in such a way that God can come into us. Yeah. We are living vessels. We are holy vessels, temples of God. Yeah. And God will come and he will live in us in such a way that it will grow through us. Yeah. It will wash out our characteristics and give us the characteristics of God. Yeah. Yeah. Meekness, humbleness. Love, kindness. Mm -hmm. These are the things that flow out of us. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. You see? Right, right, right. Now, he said, But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be it that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Mm -hmm. That old man. That old Adamic nature that you was born with has to go. You can't call yourself a child of God and that old nature is still alive in you. You have two fountains when you get born again. And, and James said, can bitter water and sweet water come out the same fountain? He said, no. How can you love God and curse your brother? How can you sit up there and call yourself a child of God and you hate your brother? We're not supposed to hate nobody. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. We don't have to like what they're doing. That's right. That's right. You have to understand this. You don't, you don't, you don't go with you don't go with sinners. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. You live a life before them. That's right. And if you live it, the way, if you allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to allow Christ to be in you, like this Bible says, mm -hmm. then your life is always going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. yep. You want to know how to make a difference in this world? Live for Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You ain't got to have all these, what you call these, uh, uh, these uh, things where you, oh, you know, we, we try to make a better world. You, you, you can't do it without Christ. <laughs> right, right. Christ is not trying to better this world. Christ is trying to get him bride out of this world. That's right. Amen. Amen. We can't make a better world. No, we serve for Jesus. That's right. We're supposed to win souls to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you have never uh, a bad guy made a change this world. It's too many stubborn folks <laughs> that believe in their own way. That's so true. Some people are just not going to be 
you say. That's right. And that's what the Bible says. So. But that won't stop you from living this life. Right. You give every man, every woman an opportunity to accept or reject Christ on the grounds of reality. By living this life. And when you live this life, God will put you in a place where you can witness to him. Yeah. But the greatest testimony that you would ever I could ever have is simply the life that we live before man. That's why the Bible said, let your light shine. Let your light shine. You see, he said, let your light shine. You're supposed to let the Father be seen in you. Not you, that they may glorify God in the life that you live. We didn't have the opportunity to walk with Christ when he was walking this earth. We didn't have that opportunity. We didn't have that opportunity to see him right, right. in a human form. Now, the Bible said no man can look upon God and live. Right. I had a brother say, oh yes you can. He was listening to the wrong preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because the Bible said, some, 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 some uh, men and women in the Bible said, I saw God. But it's not a literal seeing God. Right. They had an experience with God. Make it blank. Make it blank. I saw the hand of God. Yeah. Right. Right. You didn't literally see his hand. Come on, come on. You saw how he operated in your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how I have saw the face of God. Yes. Because I have experienced God. I have not seen his face because he does not have a face. Come on. But I will see him. Especially when I get to glory. You, see. you got angels, seraphim angels. And the Bible said for the year that Uzziah died. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And he talked about six-winged creatures. We're gonna get in that a little bit. With twain they cover their face. And with twain they covered their feet. And with twain they did fly. And they said, Holy. Come on. Holy. Holy. Wonder why they said it three times. You see. And uh, you know, I was doing some study and I heard a preacher from the past they covered their face. Why did they cover their face? Why did they cover their feet? We're going to look at that. Amen. Now, let me continue reading because I just a little bit more to go. He said that you put off the concern in the former conversation, old man, which is, now listen, uh, Paul is describing that old man. Mm -hmm. Right, right. He described our old nature, the nature that we were born with. Mm -hmm. Don't think you're a good person mm -hmm. because the Bible says ain't nobody good but God. But God. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, you know, they think highly of themselves. Mm -hmm. I try not to, well, as a matter of fact, I don't think highly of myself yeah. because I'm in Christ Jesus. Right. I lived him up in my life. Yeah. Yeah. But listen to what, how Paul described this old man. He said, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. This Bible said, the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Come on, come on. That's the condition of your heart until it be changed. Yeah, yeah. You deceitful. Mm -hmm. You corrupt. Mm -hmm. You lustful. Come on. I'm talking about me too before I got changed. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. I don't have those conditions now. Come on. Because God has come in and changed That's my Jesus. life. That's Jesus. But that old man is deceitful. It's corrupt. It's lustful. And just like uh, Minister Banks was alluding to, lust is not always dealing with sexual things. Mm -hmm. right. Right. People lust after things. Yeah. Right. Right. People lust after their job. Mm -hmm. People lust after food. Mm -hmm. That's true. You see. So lust is simply sin. Yes. Right. Right. You see, that's all it is. But he described the condition, he described the nature of that old man. And he said, and be, we as the people of God, we must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yes. 
That mind has to be changed. Because if that mind is lustful, then that man is lustful. And it's going to show on the outside. But if that mind is holy, it's been sanctified, it's been purified, then holiness is going to ooze out on the outside. You've been changed. I want God to change me. He has changed me. But if I'm going to stay changed, then there's something that I'm going to have to do. If my mind don't stay purified, then I'm going to have to purify myself. God will give you the power to do it. And it's simply by fasting and praying and seeking God. See, it's very imperative that we study God's word. We got to feed that new man just like we feed the natural man. But you don't starve the new man. You can starve the old man. You can starve that natural man by fasting and seeking God. Push that plate back. Sometimes we have a hard time pushing that plate back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on. Listen, I, the Lord put me on a fast. Three straight days and three straight nights. And I fasted like that. And let me tell you something. A bologna is like filet mignon. <laughs> Lord, I'm telling you, there was no business between put us. But on this house, Jerry, and the steak. Come on, baby, right? What's going to happen is both of them are going to get at it. And the this house is going to go further. <laughs> but you got to be careful. Yeah. The first time God put me on that fast, I fast and gave me the strength to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so thirsty. Yeah. I drank a gallon of tea mm -hmm. in about 30 minutes. I thought I was going to die. I said, Lord, if you just bless me to come through this. Thing. I said, I'll never do that again. But we have to watch ourselves because we can ruin our fast. That's so true. Come on now. I saw that gap on the teeth. It was so cold in the sweat. You know how that water be on the outside of it? It's just cold. You know what hit me? Lust. Come on, man. You have to be careful. Because you can mess your fast up. You got to come off your fast just as you enter into your fast. That's good. That's good. Amen. You can ruin your fast by sitting up there, listen, going to the restaurant and going to the hall you can eat. <laughs> Sit there and get so full, you got to unbutton your belt and see it. We have to be, we have to come off our fast modestly. That's so true. So ease off of it to it. That we can still please God. Because I don't believe God was pleased with what I did. Mm -hmm. Drinking all that tea. <laughs> but we must be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And that you put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's what God is looking for. Out of his That's what this new man is. Because this new man comes from above. This new man is holy. And God, what that new man is, is God. He's put himself in us. Because I always told you that God only fellowships with himself. That's all God does. Before we got saved, God had no fellowship with us. And before Adam, when God created Adam, he was just a form laying there in the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. He was formed. He laid there. He was inactive until the Bible said, God breathed in him the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And he became a living soul. He stood up. He saw the beauty around him. And the only reason why God fellowship with him, because God was simply, simply fellowship with himself. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And God only fellowship with himself. And when he put the new man in us, which is himself. Now he has fellowship. Because before God formed man from the dust of the earth, he had, he had counsel with himself. Right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they came together and they had counsel and he said, let us make man. He's talking about God.
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's right. He even had counsel with the angels. That's right. Come he on. had counsel with himself. Amen. That's right. And what he did, I put myself in man. That I may fellowship with him. That I may have a union with him. That I may have a relationship with him. And when God put us the new man within us, he has fellowship, he has union, he has communion. Now we can go to God and we can talk to God. You see. But we must be like Moses did. Moses entreated him. Yeah. And see, that's one of the, I believe, one of the things that we don't do as a people of God when we pray. I don't know, but I believe in this. That when we get on our knees, we too busy asking God to do this and do that. But we don't entreat God. Right, right, right. God loves to be entreated. Tell him how wonderful he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him how powerful he is. Yeah. Tell him I can't do nothing without you. I am I am I am and when you intrigue God, Hallelujah. then just like Moses, he'll answer your prayer. Yes. Yes. See, we have to learn how to pray. That's what the disciples did. That's true. Did you hear them? Teach us how to pray. That's right. That's right. Because they realized that every time Jesus did a miracle, he went back and he prayed. Yeah, yeah. And they look at him. Mm -hmm. Lord, teach us how to pray. Mm -hmm. And then men of God, they ask God who to whatever they will, God did it. I, I love Peter. Peter was he was so anointed <laughs> that his shout mm -hmm. yeah. people were lined up. They were sick. All kinds of conditions. He couldn't lay hands on everybody. So his shot. My God. <laughs> Heal My soul loves you. You can have that same closeness with God. We can have every, everything that they had, we can have it. But we got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, you see. Wherefore, put it away, lying and speaking evil. Every, every man, speak evil, every man. Truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Of one another. Yes. Come on now. We ain't got no business backbiting, talking about each other. Come on now. We have to be careful of that too. We have so much to be careful of. Because it does not take nothing for us to go to hell. You ain't got to do nothing to go to hell. But it's going to cost you everything to get to that eternal kingdom. This is what we have to understand. What do we have to do to be with Jesus? These are the things that we must know. And these are the things that we must find ourselves doing. Because we're going to cost you everything to get to that eternal kingdom. Now he said, be angry and sin not. And don't let not the sun go down on your wrath. How many, how many, how many are guilty of doing that? Don't raise your hand. Because I'm persuaded to believe that everybody is. We've been guilty of that at a time. But, you know, as we grow in Christ, we mature. That's true. Come on, that's true. So, you know, we get upset. We get a little angry. But we don't let the sun go down. We don't lay down. And you sleeping on the couch, you sleeping on the bed. You know, turn your back to each other. And you're so, you're so close to the edge of the bed, you move you know, and you fall over. <laughs> Ain't gonna hurt you. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. So, we as a people of God, we have to grow, we have to mature. And we have to allow God to, to, to he, when, when, he, when, we, when we get born again, we become holy. But it must grow in our lives. We must become more holy. That's right. That's right. There's always room for growth. Yeah. You see? Amen. And we must allow the Holy Spirit to come in our lives and lead and guide us. He must mature us. He must grow us. Yes. You know, when we first get born again, we're babe in Christ. It's very vital that we be around the people of God that's been here a while, that's been matured. That's true. That's true. Now, it, it, listen, it doesn't matter how 
long as you've been saved. What matters is, is your mind made up. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Because some people can be in here for five years and they're more mature than those that have been here 20 years. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Simply because the mind has been made up. And when your mind is made up, then God can do something with you. He can grow you. He can mature you. You see? So it doesn't matter how long you've been in church because, listen, the Bible said the judgment of God is going to begin at the house of God first. You see? And there's a lot of people that's in the church that has not even experienced the new birth. Because it's not have been explained to them. It not have been broken down to them. You see, they don't understand what the new birth is. And some people have been born again, but they have not been gone beyond the new birth. It's so much about this that we have to know. We're going to look at holiness. Let's look at holiness for a bit. Holiness, then, translated, is derived from a Hebrew root word called Gadash. And a Greek word called hag. Yep. Now the basic meaning of Kadesh is separateness. Come on, make it plain. God is separated from sin. God is actually separated from this world. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see. But he's in this world. He separated himself from the sin of the world. And as we get born again, we must do the same thing if we want to be with God. He said, be in the world, but not of the world. We cannot do what the world do. We can't get caught up in their form of dressing. We can't get up, get caught up in their language. You know, me and a great friend of mine, we talk a lot. We mess with each one another, one another. You know, he looked at me, we talked to him, he said, the spirit is wrong. I said, what are you talking about? She said, the attitude is bad. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? You see. But we have to be careful of how we conduct ourselves. Yeah. We have to be careful of how we conduct ourselves even before our spouses. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because if anybody knows you, I don't know if you know you. That's, that's right. right. That's that's so mean. You can put on the front out there. Come on. Mm -hmm. But when you get home, you know you. That is true. And if you ain't been changed, she gonna know about it. He gonna know about it. That's right. You see, holiness then is the pure loving nature of God, separated from evil, seeking to universalize the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. This is what God wants for every believer. Yes. And we're supposed to transform that life to this world yes. by the life that we live. And our lives must be holy. Yes. Holiness means separation from that world. Now, this character is inherent in places, time, and in institutions intimately associated with worship. And the holiness is to the character of every man and every woman that walks this earth. Everything that God touches is holy. He touched you and I. Yes. We become holy. Yes. And we must live this life before men, you see. Now God is all powerful, he's all wise, and all loving. And yet, he is a holy God who cannot bear the presence of sin and demands that that man and that woman be clothed in righteousness as he is clothed. Everything that God has, he gives it to us that we may be as he is. Isn't that something that God, he's so concerned about us, he loves us so much, he wants us to be like him. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. Yes, hallelujah. He wants us to love like he loved. And he loved us so much that he gave. Hallelujah. Now, the idea of holiness originated in the, and revealed the character of God in the communication of things, places, yeah. times, persons, 
engaging in his service. We have a service that we must perform in this earth. And everything that we do must come from God. Everything that we touch, that's why we can't just use anything. We can't have unsanctified tongues preaching the gospel. We can't have people that are not saved and sanctified on these instruments. They can sit out here until they be changed. That's right. Right, right. That's right. But they cannot perform in services of God. And the problem with the church collectively as a whole, that they have unsanctified tongues preaching. Unsanctified people playing instruments. Unsanctified people functioning in the body of Christ. Then that body is sick. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads and guides us. He is the one that conducts the service. He is the one that does everything in the church. And without the Holy Spirit, there is no church. But we have unsanctified people doing everything in the church. Jesus, by Jesus said, many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, did we not? Did we not? Uh, 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 cast out devils. They would not do miracles. And Jesus will deny them. Don't you know Satan can perform miracles? The Bible said he'll do false wonders. False miracles. He's going to do these things. And he's doing it now. You take these, like I always say, you take these magicians and they're doing things that seems Impossible. Mm -hmm. But they always got tricks behind it, deception, deception behind it. And people are believing it. <clears throat> They've been prepared for the Antichrist. He has to have an audience before he comes. Yeah. And the Bible said many Antichrists are already in this world. Yeah, right, right. There's so much deception going on that it's hard for us to determine what is real and what is not. Right. That's why we need the spirit of discernment. As a child of God, the spirit of discernment is not just for preachers, but every, the, spirit, the fruit of the spirit is for everyone that believes. That's right. Come on. The preacher ain't nothing special. He's just an instrument used to preach the gospel. Come on, make it work. We need sex to mean somebody back there that, that has the spirit of discernment. Somebody back there that the devil may come in. I'm too busy preaching. Y'all can detect it. Yeah. That's what the old saints do. Come on, come on. That old snoop for the devil. <laughs> you know, they, they have words. You know? Yeah, yeah. They get it, they snoop for the devil. They're trying to sit up there and shout. Can't get it right. <laughs> but that's what the saints are for. Come on now. The pastor's going to have the spirit of discernment. But listen, y'all soldiers in the army of the Lord. Y'all here to fight. I mean, don't let her get out there and start fighting. But listen, the ethical nature of holiness grows more clear as revelation unfolds until the holiness of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is revealed. Of the church as a body or an individual member of that body fills the New Testament horizon. We have to be what God has called us to be. If you're not what God called you to be, how can you? Listen, a man that's not teachable, a woman that's not teachable, cannot be used of God. Right, right, right. You have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to be taught. And you have to be willing to accept correction. That's so true. Because if you can't be corrected, you can't be used of God. Because he chases his children. He does that. He'll, he'll whoop his children. And he'll whoop us real good. Sometimes. It all depends on what we've done. You see, just like he told the children of Israel, he said, I will visit you. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to spare you. But you're going to pay the price. I will come back and visit you. Nobody gets away with nothing, you see. Now, holiness is interwoven with righteousness and purity. To seek holiness apart from the other qualities of a Christ-like life is wandering from the way of holiness itself. You see. We have to allow this to work in our lives to where we will get separated from God. Yes. 
Because we have to be careful. That's why the Bible said no man that world entangle himself in affairs of this life. Because if you get caught up in affairs of this life, it will bring separation from you and God. Because your mind is on something else. Right. Our mind has to be on Christ all the time. No matter what happens in our life, we must believe that God is greater than anything that comes up against me. And sometimes it's hard to believe that. Especially when you ain't been... Listen, Paul said examine yourself. Right, right. To see if you're still in the faith. Sometimes we gotta look, we gotta stop, we gotta think. What have I done today? Yeah. That's pleasing to God. Yeah. Yeah. Have I prayed? Did I pray when I get up this morning? In the noonday, did I pray? And in the evening, did I pray? Yeah. Yeah. Did I live this life pre? Did I walk before the people and allow Christ to be seen within me? Or did I clown with it? Did I joke with him? God is not a joking God. Right, right. Everything about God is serious. So the children of God must be serious. I mean, don't be serious to a fault where can't nobody say nothing to you. Because yeah. sometimes we get, you know, I have seen those type of people. Mm. Ain't got no smile on their face. Right. Ain't got nothing on their face. I just love the Lord. We act like you do. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> but we as a people of God we must use wisdom on how we live and the Holy Spirit will give us that wisdom the Holy Spirit will equip us with everything that we need we must allow him to come in our lives we must allow him to dominate our lives you see that's, that seems like a harsh word but we must do it he must completely dominate your life to where you ain't nothing. Right, it's right. just him. Yes. You see. And he's not here to exalt himself. But he's here to lift up Jesus. Mm -hmm. How he's going to lift up Jesus? Through a vessel. Mm -hmm. Through a vessel. God needs a body to express himself. Mm -hmm. We are chosen vessels of God. And God is going to fill this vessel with himself. That he may express it to a dying world. And we as people of God must allow him to do that consistently and constantly in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be with Jesus. Our life must mean nothing. It doesn't matter what we desire. It doesn't matter what we want. Because we must desire what God desires and we must want what God wants. Mm -hmm. You see. And the only thing that God is looking for in this earth is his son. That's what he's looking for. Now, in the sixth chapter in Isaiah, it reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Here Isaiah is having a vision of God. He's so close to God that God can show him these things. Isn't this wonderful to see? Listen to what he's saying. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne, high lifted up. You see? And he said, his train filled the temple. Y'all know what that train is, especially you women. Well, I haven't seen weddings on TV that long train was so long, she was standing at the throne and train was still out. <laughs> Men don't wear train. But he said, I saw in his train, he said, it filled the temple. And he said, above it stood seraphims. These are angels. Each having six wings. It said, with twain, he covered his feet. Why did the angel cover his feet? You know, I studied and I read, I also heard preachers say that he was not worthy to stand in the presence of God. And with twain, the Bible said, he covered his feet. He was not worthy. Even though he's in heaven, he had no sin. I'm not worthy to look upon God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with twain, the Bible said he flew. It's amazing they covered their faith they didn't run into each other. That don't happen in heaven. Everything's in order. And they cried with a loud voice, Holy! Holy! Holy is the Lord of hosts. We ought to be saying that now. 
and I holy is the Lord. Three times. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There it is. You see. They worship in God. They praise in God, even in heaven. Crying with a loud voice, giving them praise and worship. He said, and one cried, I already told you what he said about that. And the earth is full of his glory. Now God's glory and majesty and holiness demands that those who serve him must be holy. God will not use nothing that's not holy as he is. He will not use you. A lot of people that have not tasted, they have a form of God, thinking they've been used of God, and God is not even in the facility. Can you imagine being in the church 50 years and God ain't never been with you? And now it's time to stand before him. We got to be careful, saints. We got to know who we are in Christ Jesus. We got to know if we are a child of God or not. We got to know if we're holy. We got to know if we're sanctified. We got to know if we're a child of God. Do you belong to him? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Do are we a child of God? Do we think we know him? Or do we know him? You know there's a difference. If you think you know him, then you don't know him. But if you know that you know him, yeah, yeah. there's going to be a change in your life. You see? You're, going to, you're going to demonstrate that. Now the format characteristic of God reveals to Isaiah. This is what Isaiah see. He see his holiness. That's what I got Isaiah see. He see that God is a holy God. You see. Now, in Ephesians 17, 25, Paul is talking to the Ephesian church concerning that changed life. Paul is saying, listen, if you've been changed, then you don't do these things as the Gentiles do. You don't walk as the Gentile because you've been changed. Holiness demands that you change. When God comes in your life, and he comes in your life for real, you have been changed. You don't do the same thing that you do. Instantaneously, things drop. And then that's when sanctification comes in. Sanctification is simply to pull them off of the old man and put them on the new. We're going to continue to be sanctified holy. You see, as we live this life. God is always going to reveal something in your life that he wants out. But you have to come to a place of maturity when he do that. He may allow you to get away with, not get away, but he may allow certain things until you have to come to a place of maturity. It's, it's time to challenge that. And if you don't change that, you go no further with God. You see. So if God put, put, points out selfishness in your life, mm -hmm. I ain't selfish, God. Why did he point it out? Yeah. Mm. Right. right, right, right. Yeah. Sometimes you got to admit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You got to own up to who That's you are. Right. Yes. Yes. Just like that man said, Jesus said, Do I believe I, I believe in Lord? Then he turned around and said, Help my own. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. I'm not selfish, Lord, but uh, take the selfishness out of me. <laughs> it's hard to admit to certain things in our lives. That's so true. Because we may think we got it together. Mm. You got a proud heart. Lord, I ain't proud. You just showed your proudness then. If God is telling you, if you have a relationship with God and he's pointing things out in your life, that's simply sanctification. It's time to get rid of this. It's time to get rid of that. You can't go no further with this. If you want to increase with God, you got to let this go. You see, that sanctification is pulling off that old man, putting on the new. Because if we allow this old man to stay in there, we must. Now he's ever present. Don't don't misunderstand me. That old nature is ever present. That's why you got to do things. To keep the old man down. And you must keep the old man down consistently and constantly, but you do it day by day. I must get up and put that old man down. Make sure that old man don't have no way of rising up in me because he does it very subtle. It may take him 10 years to do it, but next thing you know, 10 years later, you'll go back to that old nature that you was because you're not doing the things that's keeping that old man put down. We must keep that old man down that we may stay holy. Yes, amen. Because if that old man has has just a, a, a just a little crack to get into, mm -hmm. Satan does things very subtle. Mm -hmm. 
especially when you've been walking this life. He's not going to turn you at a 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. He's going to turn you little by little. He's going to chip away. Mm -hmm. You can have a stone that weighs 12 tons, but if you chip away at it, eventually, if you keep chipping, it's going to be it's, it's going to decrease in size. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you're going to hit that right spot, and the whole rock will crack. Don't you know you can chip away, but you hit that thing right in the right spot in the center, it'll take the whole rock down. And all that devil got to do is just keep chipping and keep chipping away until he hit that right spot. You see? Therefore, we give no place to that devil. Well, we don't allow the old man to get the upper hand. And we have to do that by fasting and praying and seeking God and studying his word. Sometimes we get so caught up. When is the last time you open up the Bible? Some people don't open up their Bible until they come to church. And if you don't teach people, ask them questions, they won't do. See, I ask questions because I know if I don't, People are apt not to do. You see, that's why I'm going to start this Bible study back up. Because that gets people in their word. Because then I ask questions. Mm -hmm. You see, and a lot of people, they don't want to be embarrassed. So I'm, I'm going to ask questions that we read in the study. Mm -hmm. That's just like a child. If, he got, if that child ain't got homework, you think he's going to pick up that book and do his homework? Mm -hmm. You got to say, did you do your homework? Get in there and do your homework. Because if you don't, they won't do it. And then you got to go in there and check. Because they'll be doing just like this, looking at the wall. <laughs> I know my son, we had him in private school. And when he was in private school, well, I'm telling you, I thought the boy was a genius. I said, man, the young man's smart. He coming home, he got homework. I said, what are you doing with so much homework like that? It ain't nothing but what he in the third grade. I'm like, he had homework stacked that night. What was going on? But he was on it. I told him, why? We don't have a buy game with Catherine. Well, he went to work. I said, well, we're going to put him in public school. I know if he can do private, he can do public. What happened when he got in public school? Stupid happened. <laughs> they told us he wasn't doing nothing. He was just sitting there looking. So I said, okay, I'm going to go up there and visit. They don't tell him I'm coming. So as soon as I got there, he was just looking out the window. Well, everybody else working. He was looking out the window. Oh, what? So his peripheral vision, is that how you say it? <laughs> peripheral vision. Thank you, He saw me. He turned around and looked at it. He went to work. <laughs> the teacher said, you need to come up here every day. <laughs> he can do the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. But if nobody forced him to do it, he looked out the window. And he ain't listening to the teacher. But his daddy came up there. I'm telling you, he went to work and he started out slow, but he finished before everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and had it right. Wow. Yep. No but that's like the church folks. Sometimes <coughs> you have to give them something to do. Because if you don't, they won't do it. And it affects your growth. If you don't get into God's word, if you don't study God's word, it affects your growth, it affects your maturity, and it affects you being holy. You got to get in that word. Because God's word is holy. And if God's word is holy, then you will be holy. This is what we have to understand. We got to get in that word. Paul said, This I say, therefore, and testify unto the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as others Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their flesh, having their understanding darkened, being annihilated, being destroyed. That's what annihilation means to be destroyed. This is what happens if you allow that old man to grow again. Right, right. The Bible says that the, the, the devils, they come and they, they check and see if that house has been cleaned and garnished, been cleaned up, been garnished, been swept. 
And then he won't enter in. He'll leave and get seven devils worse than him. And come in and enter into that house. And you'll become a worse person than you was when you, before you first got saved. What's supposed to be in that house? It's not supposed to be empty. It's not supposed to be garnished. It's not supposed to be clean. But a river must flow. The Bible said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living, rivers of living water. That river must be flowing through you, which is a type of the Holy Spirit of God. If it's been clean, if it's been garnished, if it's been swept, then the Holy Spirit is not there. Because there must be a river flowing. They said that devils can't swim. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. It sounds good. <laughs> but when Jesus came in, listen, they said, Jesus said, listen, they said, are you going to destroy them before our time? Being us to go into these swines. Yeah. Yeah. They can't just enter into the swine. Jesus said, go. You know what the pigs did? They ran off into it and they drowned. Mm -hmm. So I guess they can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> they did so. I don't know. They spirit. Right. But the pigs drowned. <laughs> there must be a river of living water flowing through each and every one of us. Do you have that river today? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to use you? This is what we have to ask ourselves. Having it, this is what happened. Having, having the understanding of darkness being annihilated, been destroyed from what? The life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of their blindness. They've been blind. Even though they have eyes and they, 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 they don't see. They can't see the things of God. They can't understand the things of God. That's, that's that new man. That, man this, that new man, that old man, is not something that has been refurbished and been cleaned up. God destroys that old man. He does away with that old man. He puts what? A new man in us. He's not going to take that old man and clean it up. No. You can take a hog, <laughs> bathe it, go to the bath and body work, get all the nice shampoos. <laughs> 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 Clean it up, put it in your tub and clean that bastard up. Get all that girl up. Put him in a pig suit with a bow tie. You know what he's going to do? He's going back to that hall pen. Yep. You done done all that for nothing. That's on top of that old man. You can't clean that old man up, put a nice suit on him and everything. You know what he's going to do? He's going to go right back to sin. Right. My, my, my. Come on. Having a form of God with his head. Right. You got to be holy. You see it? And this is what we have to understand. Now, he said, who being past feelings have given themselves over to their sinfulness? Who being past feelings, they ain't got no concern about nothing but self. That's what that old man, that old man don't care about nothing. He cares about self. Right. He'll use you to get what he wants. He'll set you up to get what you want. Get what he wants. He does not care. He's past feelings. You see that's that old man. That's who we really are. Come on. We selfish creatures by nature. Mm -hmm. And if we don't care about nothing by nature, we're past feeling. You see, there may be some nice people that's not saved, but listen, God said this, your niceness, your righteousness mm -hmm. is nothing. If it's not driven by the love of God, it does not mean nothing. You see, this is what we have to understand. Well, he's a nice person. Nice person. There was a man that killed his whole family. Mm -hmm. Then people said, listen, he was nice. Mm -hmm. I never knew he was like that. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're capable of doing if Jesus ain't in your life. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to understand. Now, it says people like that are determined to gratify self. That's your whole desire when you ain't born again. Mm -hmm. It's to gratify self. You want to satisfy you. You want everything for you. You don't care. But when it's Jesus in your life, you want to be satisfied with Jesus and Jesus alone. You're not going to be selfish to other people. You're going to help other people. You're going to love one another, especially in the household of faith. You see? 
And God looks at all that. He said that you put off concerning the former man, the former conversation, the old man. We don't, you know, our conversation has to even has to be old. We got to be careful what we say and what we you have to be careful because the Bible Jane talked about that tongue. He said it's a world of iniquity. It's something that a man cannot tame. He can tame all the animals of the world he has. You know, they got they, you know, men work with animals that you didn't think killer bears. Mm -hmm. right. One of the one of the smartest mammals around. Mm -hmm. They're very intelligent, very powerful. A woman was drowning one time, and a wild killer whale in the ocean came and rose up to the surface because mm -hmm. he knew that she was in danger. Mm -hmm. That's how intelligent they are. Tongue and weight, tons and weight. Mm -hmm. But man has tamed that. Lions and tigers and bears. Men has tamed them. There's not an animal on the face of this earth that man has not tamed. But there's one problem that man has that he cannot tame is his own tongue. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah. The Bible said a small member mm -hmm. in the body. They, the Bible, James said, listen, they take small bits and they, 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 they take big ships and, and guide them where they want them to go. He said, but that tongue, no man can tame. No man can tame that tongue. God is the only one that can tame that tongue. With the same tongue, James said, we love God and we curse man. James said, I can do that. That's not so. He talking about folk in the church. He talking about the world. This Bible is concerning the church. Come on. Come on. And we got some unsanctified tongues in the church that has not been holy. That tongue will send you straight to hell. The Bible said that tongue is like an arrow. Mm. Right. You in Texas, you kill somebody in New York. Mm. Get on that phone. Wow. We got these cell phones. We got, uh, you can text a person to death. You do anything. <laughs> Folks don't talk on the phone too, and now they text. <laughs> I don't see how you can take them fingers and hit them like that. I don't understand. But these folks are good now. Yeah. You gossip. Guilty of that. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul said, examine yourself. Yeah. If we live this life day by day, moment by moment, yes. we live for today. We don't know about what we did yesterday because what whatever we did yesterday, we can't change it. That's right. That's right. You know, that's one of the amazing things about life. What you do, you can't go back and change it. Mm -hmm. Only thing you can do is apologize. Have you done something that you said, oh, I wish I could go back and change that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I would not say it's done. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do nothing about it. But be sorrowful for it. That's, right. That's why God said he'll forgive you. Thank you, Jesus. But what you've done, you're going to have to pay for it. Right. 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 Mm. You see, but I thank God that I live in this time. Because God in the Old Testament, God dealt with his people directly. Ooh, and he told up some people. <laughs> but now he deals with us through his son. Yes. He's a merciful yes. God. Yes, he is. Almost suffering God. Yes. We ain't getting away with nothing. Right, right. But he's merciful. Yes. If we do something, we have repentance. Mm -hmm. We can get it right with God. Because Bob G told the woman, don't go and sin no more. Yeah. So we have to become holy people of God. And then we have to learn how to be holy. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us what holiness is. He's a holy God. And he wants us to be holy as he is holy. We have to be holy on this earth as he is in heaven. And we must allow the holiness of God to lead in God. He is called the what? The Holy Spirit of God. He is the one that makes us holy. He is the one that keeps us holy. He is the one that when we stand before God, we won't be holy. Because when Jesus comes back and calls back for the church, he's not going to call us by our individual names. Because there's going to be so many. All he's going to call for is his spirit. Everybody that's saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Spirit, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, they're going to be gone. 
And we don't know when that day is coming. I know it's fast approaching. And I know this world is in trouble. And we, as people of God, we must stand up and be holy as he is holy. Not worrying about what people are going to say because they're going to talk. Right, right. They're going to, listen, if they call Jesus the prince of the devil, what they think they're going to call you? Amen. They talk about the son of God. They beat him, they spit on him, they persecuted him, and then they crucified him. So what you think they're going to, he said, arm yourself to do what? Suffer. Because of the holy life that you live, it's going to bring uh, violence to your life. Listen, it's coming on this side. Oh, yeah. Now they try to force people to do stuff. Yeah, that's right. After a while, I just I told my wife, I said, listen, maybe I don't know what's going to go on. Maybe they're going to tell me if I don't take the shot, I don't get my disability no more. Mm -hmm. uh, She's going to have to fully take care of it because I ain't taking the shot. <laughs> I think she will. <laughs> I got a little something on my hand. I got a little something on my hand. I, I think that little something may be saving me. I don't know. But you don't know what this world. I don't know the Bible says it's going to get worse and worse. I believe we're living in a time where the just should live by faith. Oh, yes. We're going to have to believe God like this Bible says. Because it's getting to a point. We think it's overseas, but it's coming over here. Yes, they're already saying that you cannot build no more churches. Mm, but they're what? still doing it. They're trying to pass that. Mm. Because it's, they say it's too, too many churches in the United States. Uh -huh. And they want to stop. You see, it's coming on this side. To call yourself a child of God will cost you. Yes, Are you willing to pay that price? Oh, see, the Bible said we're going to separate the right and the wrong. We're going to find out who really loves God. Because after a while, calling yourself a child of God may cost you. It may cost you your job. It may cost you your life. Are you willing to pay that type of price for Jesus? Because if you're a child of God, then you're going to do it. It doesn't matter. These All you got to do is read the Bible. These men and women of God are ready to die. They are ready to die for Jesus. Are you ready? To die for Jesus. Because it's going to come. Persecution is going to come. It's already here. We got to read it. We got to understand the signs of the time. Jesus said, No man knoweth the hour or the time he's coming. But he said, I will give you the signs of the time. And it's here now. Oh, is that restored to you? Do you know what's going on around you? That's why it's good to look at the news periodically. Because all they show is doom and gloom. They have a few good things going on. But for the most part, right. people are dying, people are killing. There's a war. There's a war somewhere right now. Yeah. And the Bible said, Jesus said, when he comes, you're going to hear more than rumors. Yeah. All you got to do is read the word of God, and you'll know exactly what's going on in your time. Yeah. Now is the time to get ourselves right with God. Right. Now is the time to prepare ourselves for God. Right. Right. Now is the time to work. It's not a time just to come and sit in the church. It's not a time to come to church periodically. It's the time to get right with Jesus that we may be ready when he comes. Whether he take us by death or by the rapture, we must be ready. Are you ready this evening? Are you ready to meet him? If, I, if, 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 if he come back right now, would you go with him? Because we're going to find out after a while. Yeah. All is going to come to a head at the line. We're going to find out if you really and all that shouting and mm. speaking in tongues, all that stuff, all that sitting there just standing at the preacher like he did. Listen, all that's going to come because that ain't going to help you one day. You got to put something into this. You got to love him. You got to be holy because he commanded us to be holy. You see, I don't have no favorite preacher. I just love preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. If a donkey get up there and preach nothing but the gospel, <laughs> I'm going to find out how he do that, but I'm going to go along with him. It. It, it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The word is the word. The word is the word. That's right. That's so true. 
It doesn't matter who get up here and preach. Oh, Brother Billy, he can get up here and preach the gospel. He preaching the gospel? Come on. Come on with it. Yes, All right, Brother Billy. It does not matter. Some people call up and serve preaching. Come on. You got to watch that. That's so true. Because sometimes, because he ain't your favorite preacher, you may miss something. That's true. That's so true. All of my favorite preachers, they preach the gospel. That's it. It doesn't matter who's doing it. That's it. As long as they preach it, hold it. As long as they come from the word of God. But that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. He's coming back. God ain't looking for nothing but holiness. Because he commanded for us to be holy as he is holy. And when we stand before him, you see, we must be holy if we're going to see him in peace. If not, we're going to experience the wrath of God throughout all eternity. Who wants that? Mm -hmm. Who wants to go to hell? Mm -hmm. You ask a thousand people, do you want to go to hell? A thousand people will say, no, I don't want to go to hell. But probably 990 is going. <laughs> because the Bible said this way is straight. Now, then this, the Bible said this way is straight. It's now. And he said, few that be there that find it. That's one of the most frightening scriptures in this Bible. Because that's letting us know a great percentage of the church is not going to heaven. That's not talking about the world. That's talking about the church. We better get this in perspective. This Bible is concerning the church. And Jesus said, few that be there that find it. Talking about the church. One of the most frightening scriptures in this Bible. Going to church once a week ain't going to get it. That's starving that new man. And the Bible tells us to come that we may hear. Because God is not going to give you what he gives the preacher. If that be the case, then you don't need a preacher. The Bible says you can't hear without a preacher. And how can you hear him unless he be sin? Now we have to understand that every preacher is not a preacher of God. Every church is not established by God. We have to be careful that we be led by the Holy Spirit. He'll lead and guide you into the right place. Right, right. If you want to know him, Jesus is going to send you to a place where you can know him, where you can learn of him. If you're going to know him, you must first have to learn. And if you're not a teachable individual, how can you know him? It can't nobody tell you nothing. Right, right. Nobody knows everything. When a person comes to tell you he knows everything about this word, get up and leave. <laughs> right. Because no man. Now, if you got some people that can go deep, 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 deep into the word. But even they don't know. Paul didn't know everything. He said, everything I learned, I call it as dumb. Mm -hmm. To obtain the excellency of Christ. That's right. Come on. There were still things Paul did not know. But listen, he knows a whole lot more now. But he's in heaven. And he don't want to come back, trust me. Mm -hmm. Anybody that this, ain't nobody looking down. Oh, I, mean, I know you're looking down, but he ain't looking down. Mm -hmm. he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't concerned about what's in this world. He don't left this world. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, I said, Lord, if you just give me wings like a dove, I fly away. But God got a word for me to do. And I must be about my father's business. Right. I'm just because God got a work for you to do, you must allow him to do it. Right. You got to allow him because God don't use nothing but that which is holy. And we have to understand that. Where you stand this morning, are you holy? I know you ain't going to say that, don't say that. <laughs> but are you holy this morning? Are you allowing God to use you? Are you allowing the holiness of God to shine in this world? Are you allowing men and women to see the holiness that God has put in you? Don't you know you can be holy and not show it? Because you don't interact with nobody. Because you don't let that light shine. When you're on a job, you don't get into the things that they do. But you let that light shine. They don't know. Listen. One thing the sinner can do is tell who the real and who not. The Bible said the world knows its own. 
And if you if you out there trying to perpetrate being holy, that world gonna know that you ain't holy. Because they're gonna bring it out of you. They're gonna talk about you next thing you know, you're gonna cuss them out. I know it. I knew you wasn't right. That's, so true. That's why you gotta have God in you. Because people will get you so angry. Mm -hmm. You mess around and step out your holiness. Mm -hmm. And you done cussed them out or said something, they, that lets you know, I told you. You got told you you wouldn't allow nothing. Now you done messed it up. Mm -hmm. You done messed it up. Don't you know if you mess up one time, them folks will take it to your dying grave. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. It takes a lifetime to build up mm -hmm. the character of God and get people to respect you. Mm -hmm. But the devil will always come and try you. Mm -hmm. He will always come and tempt you. He's always going to come and talk about you. Listen, what you say about me, some of them might be true, but who cares? Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can say, oh, he ain't no good, he ain't this, he ain't that. You may be right, but I've been changed. Mm -hmm. So what you say don't matter no way. Mm -hmm. I've been talked about since I can remember. Mm -hmm. It didn't affect me then. It most definitely ain't going to affect me now. Mm -hmm. They can say you ugly. I said, yeah, but I got a pretty girl. <laughs> I must have done something. <laughs> she didn't think I was too ugly. <laughs> you know, I was a little younger then, so I didn't have any bad in my head. <laughs> but listen, call me what you want to call me. Because we live in a life where people don't talk about you, whether it be good or bad. And they may lift you up, and next week they'll tell you that. What you gonna do? Let it affect you? No. Only that affect you. Or people gonna say what they want to say. I have heard people talk about me and join the conversation. <laughs> and they look at me like I'm crazy. You know what they do? They stop talking. <laughs> you gotta know how to deal with people. That is so true. They said Paul was mad, much learned, made you mad. <laughs> they called Paul, Paul crazy. Because he loved his Lord so much. Yeah. And when you love God like that, you know what they're going to tell you? Something wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, what you going to do? Stop loving your God? No. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to show you how crazy I can get. <laughs> Just like he said, then. I give you a problem. I give you a reason to complain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how crazy I am. <laughs> Because I love, I love Jesus. Amen. And I, I, he, he, like this Bible said, he gets sweeter and sweeter. Yeah. He's sweeter than a honey on a honey mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't like pure honey that much. Well, I like it now. But he's sweeter than that. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that. That honey is sweet. And when it comes fresh out the comb, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is sweeter than that. Yeah. You can't you can't describe the sweetness of Christ and the simplicity of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is not this is not a hard life to live, but you got to have power yes. because you can't live without power. Yeah. You see, that's why he says study and be quiet. That's a hard thing to do unless you have power. 